I was at this draft. With the first pick in the 1993 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Chris Webber from the University of Michigan. I should have wore the suit that I wore to his draft to my draft. What a, a moment that you just forget happened. You have the Orlando Magic selecting Chris Webber, who was the number one pick, understandably the number one pick, arguably one of the top 10 highest profile college basketball players coming into the NBA draft in history. It's a surefire pick. You're an Orlando Magic fan. You are so happy about this. There are Orlando Magic fans like trying to buy Chris Webber jerseys immediately. But then... Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to report a trade. Once David Stern says... Orlando... You already get boost from the crowd because Magic fans are saying, no, 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 no. We are not trading Chris Webber. Has traded the draft rights to Chris Webber. To Golden State. David Stern did a terrific job of selling that. The shock on his face. <laughs> Enjoying every second of it. Like, that's David Stern for you. I love him. Miss him. In exchange for the draft rights to Anthony Hardaway and three future first round draft picks. Not one, not two, but three future first round picks. Three. Look at the look of Chris Webber's face. <laughs> three future picks. Oh my God. Wow. This happened in real life? Don't get it wrong. C. Webb was like, he had been the best basketball player since about the ninth grade of high school, right? But Penny was just different. What could have been? They gave up that much. I mean, no, not uh, see what I love. See Web, that's my dude. Weber was that guy that can knock down fifteen footers, shoot threes here and there, had some shimmy to him. It would have worked. It just wouldn't still have worked as well as Shaq and Penny. <laughs> Shaq and Penny were just Shaq and Penny. They traded Penny Hardaway and three first round picks for C Web, and he only played with the Golden State Warriors one season. He played with the Golden State Warriors one season after all of this because he and Nelly didn't see out of eye. Yeah, so this is a this is an NBA draft pick snake eating its tail because two of those picks that went to Orlando went to Washington that were then turned into Chris Webber. So I, I'm not that smart, but I think Chris Webber was traded for Chris Webber. One of those picks ended up being Vince Carter. Wow. So Toronto ended up getting that pick because Toronto traded with Golden State for Anton Jameson, and ultimately that was the flip pick. Wow. And I don't understand how GMs keep their jobs. It's these GMs who make these terrible decisions that can set a franchise back like 10, 20 years. It's not even, it's not even funny. Oh, oh, what a bombshell draft night. Everything was classic, even R.I.P. to David Stern, man, looking young, clean, but the news, how they broke the news and the reaction and everything was just like, that's priceless. That's probably one of the best NBA draft moments ever. On the parquet. Oh, inside pivot. I've never seen that. Uh, uh, that's, I can't even figure out that move right there. I gotta rewatch this real quick. Off the right foot, a half spin. Oh, oh, the whole spin. Off the right into a... Smitty into a step back. But he used his opposite foot first. He, I mean... I think, you know, it's, it's so funny when you see a move as an athlete, you start doing the timing in your head about how, to, how it would go down. Crossover, half spin. That, like... He puts his back to the basket, 20 feet from the basket. He's basically posting up from the three-point line, and then he decides not to put his back to the basket, but do a step back and turn around and throw up a prayer with two seconds left on the clock. 
I wonder what's the name of that move. Like, we, we got to call that something. This is bad basketball. If my son saw this clip and said, I'm going to work on that move, I would say, sir, you're better off cutting off your left foot than working on this move. This is not something that anyone should ever attempt again. And you know what? I'm going to go and wax and say this. I've never seen anybody do this step back before. The move you just saw Penny do, it, it's a combination of a spin and a hesitation that have put somebody on their heels and they don't know what you about to do. It looks so wrong, but so right. <laughs> He's dancing. He's dancing, people don't, people don't know about Penny Hardaway. If you don't know, now you know. Like, you have to be special to do something like that. Did you see the footwork on that? Like, it's one thing when you're working on that type of footwork, but to have that footwork translate into an in-game experience, and it looked as effortless as that. Like that's, you don't, you can't teach that. That was a step back long before it was a step back. It looked less like a travel. Penny was like before his time. Like now we're, we're seeing all the Euros and, and James Harden with the, the step back, step back, step back, step back off of one leg. Like Penny was already doing that. Like he was already in his, in, what they say in his bag. When he was in his bag, his carry on, he had a suitcase he threw under the air, had a backpack on. Like Penny was that dude. James Harden has step backs in his package that don't make sense. He's got one step back where he actually steps back into a one arm handstand and then kicks the ball at the basket, but he has never done this 180 step back ever. We don't get this anymore because that's a bad shot. Sorry, should have been a three year old game. Penny was a lot of people's favorite players. He was like, for a while, it was. You know, for us, when you talk about the most popular players, it was Michael Jordan, then Penny Hardaway. Like, everybody had those pennies, too. Like, the next shoe that was in line was pennies. I, I used to wear the Penny Hardaways all day when I was in college. And they went with my college uniform with Kansas. I had the blue and white ones. Oh, my gosh. Penny Hardaway has the most underrated run of signature shoes in the history of signature shoes. Go ahead. He will go shoe for shoe against every single person in the world except for Michael Jordan. There is not another NBA athlete with the consistency, with the volume, and with the impact and the long tail. People are still wearing foam posits. I would be wearing foam posits right now if I can afford them, and I'm on television and I can't afford them. In the league with Michael Jordan had Air Jordan and Jumpman, Penny still was able to have a little Penny imprint and be successful. With Nike, with Penny Hardaway, and with Chris Rock. I think a lot of people remember Little Penny as a puppet, but Little Penny was not a puppet. Little Penny was Chris Rock, one of the greatest stand-up comedians to ever hold a microphone. Oh my gosh. Those were the best commercials ever. I'm telling you, I was, I was in love with Penny. From a culture perspective, I can see, you know, it's my nerdy side coming out though. I, I saw like brands start to pivot on how they uh, created content, which is pretty cool. They started to create content based on personalities for culture, which I like. I give Spike Lee a lot of credit because he's the common denominator to help validate MJ in a lot of ways in the urban environment. Yes, we love how he played basketball, but we didn't like the fact that he didn't speak up for social issues. So Spike Lee, gave him a level of validity with Mars Blackman. In a different way, Spike Lee's creative side helped introduce us to Little Penny, and uh, Spike Lee needs to get a lot more credit for what happened with the launch of both of those very successful campaigns. People need to watch this, because most people only remember Shaq in LA or Miami. This is when Shaq was still trying to decide if he was going to be powerful, dominant, shoot layups and dunks, or like try to expand my game. Oh, oh two hands. See, that's the difference. As he started to get older, he was dunking on the way down. Young Diesel was dunking them things on the way up. His hands were so fast. Get out of here, seven footer. You're able to get the ball at the pinnacle of a jump shot. He's just so great. This is the real life version of Superman. Oh, give me that. Oh, oh, Shaq, that ain't right. Dun, 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 dun. You Shaq with a little feathery jumper. 
I don't remember the finesse part so much, but he had finesse in this game. Sorry, I'm, 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 you're turning me back into a fan right now. You can't stop the rain when it starts to fall. No one left to blame. Shaq was so, look at Shaq in such great shape. And he could just spin off people and get to the glass in traffic rebounds. He moves like a guard, but is an absolute freight train. And Biggie gave him a verse too. Condos with elevators in them. Like Biggie gave him some bars. Lost chips on Lakers, gassed off Shaq. He just looks taller and more athletic, moving so well. Yeah, he was ferocious in Orlando. He, he was an animal in, 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 respectfully, in LA, but this 30 pounds lighter Shaq. 24 points, 28 rebounds, 15, 15 block shots. 28 times he secured the rebound. Majority of the time, teams only get about 35 rebounds as a whole. So he had 28 moves. 24, 28, and 15 is not a crazy stat line. However, 24, 28, and 15 blocks is out of control. So just think about that. 15 blocks. 15 times in this game, a professional basketball playing human being thought they were going to get a shot up on Shaquille O'Neal, and they were so, so wrong. 15 blocks. Like, do you know how hard it is to get five blocks in a game? I think, like, after Shaquille O'Neal blocks your team shot nine times and you call a timeout and you guys are all in the huddle, it's like, hey, man, they've got a really tall, really athletic giant in the middle of the lane. And every time we seem to try to take a shot on him, he blocks it. Perhaps, just an idea, no bad ideas in a brainstorm. Perhaps we should not do that. But he, he had to probably alter 30 shots, you know, 30, 40 shots overall. And then after 13 times, your team gets their shot blocked. You call timeout again, you huddle up. And like, guys, just to sort of go over the strategy again, the gigantic man in the middle, number 32, three and then two in the other uniform, do not try to shoot over him. If he's created that kind of aura around the basket, like that's you're altering shots before the shots even get there. And then after the 14th and the 15th time, you don't even call timeout. You're just like, this is this is just not gonna, they're never. 15 blocks, you completely dominated the court. Uh, players like that don't come around too often. So it's only been two in our league that I believe that's on that level. So Will, Shaquille O'Neal, might not see nothing like this again. Maybe not in my lifetime. I think if Shaq came up in today's era, he'd be putting up. Th this era would be Shaq's opportunity to put up the numbers Wilt put up in his era. Game is smaller. I think his game would be quite different. Um, but I still think for him, it, it's always going to revert back to he would still be probably the largest, I mean, one of the largest dudes in the league. You're not going to be able to bully him. So his game, as long as he's in shape, is still conducive. He can still get you those stat lines, you know? Especially Orlando Shaq, catching lobs and spinning out and blocking shots. He, that, that, would, that would be his chance to get his world numbers. Can you just imagine though, Shaq would have stayed this size the whole time with the Lakers? Imagine Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway, except they were kind of in one body. That's how athletic, young, skinny Shaquille O'Neal was. He is not the man that can't beat Kenny to the big board. He was a very different human being when he was in his early 20s. You know, if he would have kept that whatever, 50 or 40 or 45, 50 pounds off this Shaq here, we probably would have been talking about not only is the most dominant, but he could have possibly been one of the best defenders of all time. How about Shaq never led the league in blocks or rebounds? But that comes with being in great shape. Like that Shaq in Orlando, no knock on the Deezer in LA because he was still a beast. But the Shaq in Orlando was so skinny and had so much like energy to, to, to give out on both ends of the floor that he was able to dominate like that. Like 28 boards and 15 blocks. That's that's every coach's dream. Shaq. Shaq pulling it down. That's what we haven't seen. He didn't break it. He just took it down. It ain't right. I mean, we didn't see rims be taken off the backboard and glass smash 
We ain't never seen somebody bring down the whole goalpost, like the whole thing. The NBA, not just the fans and not just the players, but the people that run the facilities, the actual hoop themselves, the actual arenas themselves that needed to adjust to the physical presence that was Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, this made the league have to have extra baskets and stanchions in the building because the game would be delayed like an hour. Six or six, 14 points. <laughs> Broken backboards, one. Good stat line. It's one thing to break the backboard. That's glass breaking. This man broke the entire contraption that holds the backboard. This is right here. This is what made people afraid of Shaq. It was just his brute strength. Like, he just badly hung on the rim, and the goal just came coming, like, just falling down, just like they was putting it up to put it in the back closet. <laughs> It bends the knee, Game of Thrones style, to him. It bows down to him in a way that praises him. And he's like young Simba being held up on the mountaintops. We all must just bow and accept our new king, that is Shaquille O'Neal. That was the light shake. Like, that wasn't even the heavy shake. That was the light shake, if if that sound right, right? Is Shaq, was Shaq ever light? <laughs> I'm just saying. He was just the biggest human being you'd ever seen. Early in Shaq's career, I was walking down the hallway in the arena, as they used to call it, after a playoff game. And you know how you're walking toward people? I'm in a suit, and I'm working for the Washington Post. And the people coming your way, their eyes get big, and you don't know why. And all of a sudden, before I could turn, my own eyes got big. Shaq, and I weighed about 250 at the time, Shaq had just lifted me off the, the floor, off, playing off the floor like a little baby. 6'2", 250, I'm not tiny. Every time I see Shaq on set, and I've been around him for a long time, you're just like, yo, that is one large person. Like, you are, how did you move him when he played? The way he cleared out space, like when Shaq went to the middle and he drop up and that elbow came, like, you knew you had to duck your head because he literally did it on purpose. Like, he didn't extend it. But when it came around, it was like, my God. To the point where I was like, I had to, like, follow him one time. I was like, hey, man, watch that elbow. In the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I hope these are those swing, bro. <laughs> one game, we playing Shaq. And I remember they lobbed the ball over the top to him because we were front, we was in a front position. He catches the ball, and I'm on the weak side. It's just me. It's him, me, and the rim. And I slap down as hard as I can. Nobody else in the league would have had the ball in their hands. And I just remember how loud it was. It was just like, bow. I just knew I was going to get this. The ball did not move. And he just went up right there and just dunked. I was like, man, I'm not coming over here no more. Oh, hitting an open floor. Watch out. Oh, are you serious? This is like MJ. Whoa, baby, move over Michael Jordan. See, move over Michael Jordan, I feel validated. That is stuff that is, you can teach it all day long, but that's just an innate touch. That's an innate skill set that uh, not a lot of people possess. One distinct reason why. In order to do a move like that, you have to be able to jump. Penny Hardaway was able to do so. I was gravity challenged. Like, people that play as much basketball and have the instincts that he does can do things like this, which make people like me, which have no athleticism or instincts, just jealous and envious and entertained. If anybody's game I ever wanted to have is Penny Hardaway's. I was like, my game is all right. I want his game. You know, a 6'8", 6'9", point guard. You know, everybody looked at him like a more athletic Magic Johnson. My entire life. I wanted to be the next man. And then I saw Penny, I'm like, he got a real chance. That's what he had, that magic around the field. You gotta have that, that, that flip of the wrist. He was different, man. I see why he was LeBron's favorite player. It had to be. I don't remember the first time I saw Penny play. I think I remember seeing clips of him play. It just was like, the only thing we got common is that we're tall and then we're black. Like, we both tall point guards. I'm like, he quick, he can jump. His game is beautiful. Describing Penny's game is more like watching 
a Lamborghini take a very tight corner and then another very tight corner and then go 250 miles an hour on a, on a straightaway. It's just it's just watching the finest tuned machine perform at the highest level and doing what it was built to do. If you look at Penny Hardaway's measurables, what he's able to do with the basketball, passing ability, leading the game, jump shots, driving, finishing, defending, he checks all of the boxes. Penny Hardaway could score. He averaged 21 points a game, like in his second or third season. He followed it up with a 22 point. And that's sharing the ball with Shaq. And that is never being a gunner. That is never being selfish. They would have changed the direction of basketball, the history of basketball, had they been able to stay healthy. Like, Penny would have went down as, he probably would have been for sure top 20 greatest of all time if he would have had a healthy career. If Penny Hardaway and Grant Hill hadn't got injured, we would have conversations about both of those guys being two of the top 12 players of all time. They, they would definitely be in that conversation between 11 and 20. They would be in that conversation. No hyperbole. I really believe you'd be talking about Penny in the same light as Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, man. I think he was really that talented, that good. You have to compare it to like a time-lapse video of a flower blooming, something that appears in nature that is beautiful, because that is what we saw, the perfect basketball player playing basketball perfectly. And it's just, I just feel bad that Penny Hardaway got hurt. It's just, it's hard to watch and see Penny Hardaway not be able to fulfill it all, because he was something else. Who's that? No, Shaq did not throw that in. Shaq? That was Shaq? Now, this play is significant for many reasons. Now, everyone else is going to say this is the only three that Shaquille O'Neal ever hit. Really? One career three? Really? He attempted a few of them, though, right? Oh, one? I did. That was the only one he ever made. Wow. That's crazy. Man, I thought that was Penny. They're missing the point. This was not a pass to Shaquille O'Neal. I believe this was a pass to Penny Hardaway because when you need someone to shoot a 30-foot jump shot with one second, Shaquille O'Neal is not high on the priority list of people you want to get the ball to. I see you, Big Diesel. Look, you're walking off like, look, I do this. I do this. That's how he walked off. Damn, look, I dude was looking at him like, man, if he gonna be doing that, then this is game over. He gave a little smirk at the end on the bench, but in his mind, you know, he let him. Yeah, you know, Milford's I can do this here. You know what I'm saying? That's how these are. Yeah, you think I can just dump? No, I can do everything. But he was in his package. He was feeling good. Yes, it is his only three-point made of his career. But he didn't even try to put it off the backboard, so he has never intentionally made a three-point shot. But he shot that three in rhythm, like he came off a pin-down curl. And he called Glass. Y'all just didn't hear him. The crowd was too loud, but I heard him. He said, bite. I don't know if it was due to injury or tightness or stiffness, and I think it affected his free throws too, is that he never cocked his wrist. You know the shot does everything like it's a shot put. I think what that is is being young and having big hands and playing with different size balls, because that's how you shoot in the house when you're playing in the house. Are you playing on a hanger? Are you shooting in a garbage can? I truly believe Shaq could have developed the three if he wanted to. You know what? Let's not let him into Springfield. No Hall of Fame for Shaq. Let's take let's take down all the retired jerseys. You know what? In the, the year in the analytics age, he's just not an effective basketball ball player. Obviously, no use for Shaquille O'Neal in today's NBA. Can't shoot threes. Shaq told me a great story once. How in high school um, he decided to take a three point. And his, and his father, Sarge, was at the game. Sarge goes right into the locker room, right into the locker room, puts Shaq in the locker, and says, what the hell was that? And Shaq says, I got range. I got range. I got range. I can do stuff. And Sarge said, don't let me ever see that again. So I think when Shaq took that three right there years later as a pro, as a grown man, he still might have heard Sarge's voice in his head. And, you know, it was the end of the quarter, end of the half, whatever it was. It was okay then, but only then. I was with the Pelicans, and it was a shot just like then they swung it to me. 
And the ref said my toe was just on the line a little bit and they did not give me credit for it. I was so hot. Would have been my only three. But yeah, I do feel jealous because that's it. I mean, you know, you hit your three, man. You could say you, you know, you did everything because you you didn't hit mid-range, just turn around as a big and you knocked down the tray ball. Hey, Perk, how many threes you got? I got one, but I made it. I can't say that. I cannot say that. I got to live with that for the rest of my life. But I remember this series based on the fact that, wow, it was Penny, it was Shaq, Horace Grant's return, MJ. Ooh, I was at this game. Put MJ in that bucket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big guard. Look at Penny by then. Penny could just pull up and take it by then. Oh, come here, MJ. Man, he's just backing Jordan down, shooting over it. Too small. Look at this jab step on him. On, on, on Michael, backs Michael down, and he's taller. And look at his turnaround, look how beautiful that is. Oh my God, his game was so smooth. Look at that screen and roll, but there was no, you didn't need to roll. Penny Hardaway was gonna use that screen to get open. Shaq got the Bootsy fade. He got the little Bootsy fade, you see it? <laughs> Shaq says, no, Luke, you're not getting this big boy. Oh, I was sitting in the baseline right there. Mm. <laughs> I see Shaq just bulldoze somebody over with a bear hug. See what I'm saying? You see what I what I mean about that energy level, man, when you're in shape? It's, it's a difference. Hurdling over people. And then guess what? If that was the Shaq Lakers, they probably would have had to carry that person out on the stretch. Oh, run the jewels. Like Killer Mike. Come on. Big fella. Don't tear it down. We want to catch flights out of Chicago. Don't tear it down. That's not fair, man. Shaq was not fair. He was just a cheat code. Don't tell me inside basketball has to be dead. Nobody throws an entry pass anymore. Entry to what? What are they going to enter? Anybody standing with his feet on the line is going to say, let me do a step back. Right now, there's a whole generation of basketball players saying, what's an entry pass? God. That's what you call a slippery eel. Up and under a little bit, then slide through two defenders. This team was so good. They were breathtakingly effective. It's over right here. Here's the, you know what? Cherry on the Sunday. Shaquille should not have dunked that ball. And what he should have done, he should have just dribbled out the clock. Oh, no. Come dribble out the clock. What do you mean? They just beat the Bulls. Doug Collins, old school. He already knew that they was doing too much celebrating in the home of that black cat. And Doug then fought with him on the floor. And he knew that that celebration, he said, he was like, he should have dribbled that ball back out. I don't know if I would have did that. Who was that, Doug Collins? He should have been rooting for Shaq after the Bulls fired him. What was he mad for? Stop hating. They carried Horace Grant off the floor. Look at Michael looking at him. Like, all right, all right. There is no happiness that a human from our entire history of our species can achieve than the happiness that Horace Grant feels when he takes off those goggles and walks into that locker room knowing that Michael Jordan and all the rest of those bulls are in the opposing locker room ready to end their season while the Orlando Magic march on. God, I love Horace Grant. We thought that was the beginning of something special. Uh, they would go on to get to the finals, but lose to Houston and not get back to the finals with, with, with that cast. It just felt like, I was like, oh, okay. Like this team is the new it. It's the new it in basketball. I'm mad, I'm mad that Penny and Shaq didn't work out, to be honest. You knew Jerry West was gonna do something and Shaq was the something. Shaq was too big a fish to stay in Orlando. And I know they had to hurt the people of Orlando uh, um, to just watch Shaq go West and deliver like that when they thought Shaq could have delivered in the same way with Penny Hardaway. You know what? So do I. If the Bulls were the new wave off of the Pistons, then you felt like Orlando had a chance to take that mantle. I think this team, this Orlando team, if they had to stay together, they could have won at least one or two cha championships. Orlando is one of those, that's one of those, what happens if? What happens if Penny Hardaway is able to stay healthy? Does Shaq stay? I mean, it I, I didn't look like it. It looks like Shaq was going to L.A. no matter what. I love Shaq in, in, in L.A. Three straight championships, three straight finals MVPs. 
But Shaq in Orlando grabbed every rebound and blocked every shot. On Orlando, he was an unpolished diamond. On the Lakers, he was polished. Penny and Shaq was, in a way, more invigorating, more inspiring, and more hopeful than Kobe and Shaq because Kobe and Shaq was just too dominant, too perfect. Penny and Shaq were two young people in the league, barely getting their sea legs underneath them in the National Basketball Association to find themselves dominating. And then say, you see the way it went down, it was just like, man, damn. You always go back to what could have. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.